<laughs> Hello everybody, it's Leopardman102, your friend, and today we are back with part 2 of the 0.19 update. So, without further ado, I did not go anywhere, let's just grab a new vehicle and get into it. So, our first new thing, let me let me again double check, make sure that there was no more on the Gavrils. I don't think there was, no, nope, because the track and the drift and all those have been here. Street Team did get the narrow bed, but that was literally it, uh, just with a couple of the others. Uh, I'm double checking real quick, making sure I'm not missing anything in the Moonhawks or anything. Uh, sometimes those muscle cars have stuff in, you don't always see it at the same time. So, um... And definitely comment down below if I've missed something that you guys want to see. Uh, but for the most part, I'm pretty sure we have everything under control and all intact. Yes, yes, we do. So, we looked in the last video, we looked at the Piccolina, the Pigeon's new paint job, and the D-Series, and a couple other minor things along that line. Today, we are looking at the H-Series, driving a little more at Small Island, the Shareer FCV, and we are also looking at the Roamer. Because those three also have some major updates. So, let's actually start out with the Roamer. Just because we're doing uh, some of that. So, you might notice something already, and that's, and that's, so we have our standard version. I'm just going to get a V8 version. Or, no, I'm just going to get a V8 XT version. So, we'll pull up our V8 XT here. Looks normal. I mean, maybe a new two-tone for it, but that's about all it needs. Oh, yeah, this rear-wheel drive, buddy. All right, so we got to get, let's see, oh, we're, we're losing control, that's for sure. Let's see if we can get ourselves back on the main roads real quick. We'll just take the X uh Gavril XT. Alright, so we'll light throttle and then we'll go probably this way. Probably this way. I can only imagine driving a rear wheel drive vehicle like this on a track like this in real life. That would kinda seem. Hey look, main road people. So we'll just hit the brake right there. We'll do that. Inverted day shout out. I'm feeling pretty confident. So uh, there will be a shout out at the end of the video with another link in the description for you guys to go check out. Anyway, so let's take a look at the new difference. So there's a top of the line wheelbase extended model. So there's a new extended model called the V8 LXT and the V8 four wheel drive LXT, which is another extended wheelbase model. So we'll just get the LXT for now. Uh, the only difference, like I said, is just the four wheel drive. So we'll just hit spawn new. And put that next to our vehicle real quick so I can show you guys how much longer this thing is. I mean, this thing's a stinking bus, and it's got a different back to it, which I think is slightly uglier. Um, I'm sure, uh, yeah, let me know, I mean, if you think that's uglier too. Hit the comment down below. Uh, hit the comment down below, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, let's kind of line these bad boys up. There we go. And then we'll just show off the engine, makes it easier, and our camera just randomly jerked. So first of all, I mean, this is about as equal lined up lined up as I can. I mean, look how much longer this thing is over here. It's it's ridiculously long. It's like a bus. And then the backs are a little different too. Um I don't think they open, however. I think on the Gabriel, uh yeah, none of them open, sadly, but if they did, you know how they open. So we have an extra row of seating, I think. I think we got one, two, three, three rows of seating in this SUV, kind of like the Gavril, the other Gavril. And then this one, we got two rows, but quite the storage. And both of these, you have quite the amount of storage. So you can fit nine people in both of them. Sorry, it's just fun to hit the S and watch the brakes light up. So without further ado, let's actually drive the bad boy. Uh, there's not really any differences on the outside. Different paint, and like I said, the different back. They look a little different, but that's a little, so that's, that's about it. So let's drive this bad boy around. Since it's the XT, of course, it's got some power behind it, and it's got some kick for being as long as it is. As we know, there's a lot of kick. Like I said, I drive these things pretty aggressive. Uh, I know we're only hitting like 40, uh, like 40 or 50, but now we're going to rock up some speed. Let's do a killer. Oh, no, no. Oh! Oh, we took out our engine doing that? Oh, jeez, we like... Oh, hang on, hang on. Why is there water under the land? That's a little creepy. Alright, so let's see if we can very gently... I'm gonna scroll down to kill our strength. Oh, well, okay, so our headlight went out, but... Yeah, there's gonna be a couple extra deaths, but I just... 
Yeah, our parking's been knocked out, too, but, like, oh, jeez, dude, we, like, completely... Ladies and gentlemen, our first crash already with the XT Roamer, and that's probably one of my favorites, because, like, underneath there, we probably, like, oh, we knocked that whole drive shaft out of place. We knocked the frame out of place. Ladies and gentlemen, that has been Leopard Man 102. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's pretty normal compared to this one, and then there's a couple other versions as well. Um, of the Roamer, there's like a, uh, so there's the four-wheel drive LXT, Ultimate Smooth Run Behemoth, uh, they're both the same thing, or School Run Behemoth, uh, it's just the four-wheel drive model, there's not a huge difference there. The Road Sport looks like it's got a couple things to it, unless my mind is going crazy, I'm pretty sure the Road Sport's got some new stuff. Yes, it does! The bumper has changed and so does the exhausts. Uh, everything's changed, like the hood and everything, uh, the interior's still nice and normal. Uh, this is the automatic version, uh, because I am on Nemo. No, for real though, it's got, like, a little spoiler on it now, and it's got, like, some different wheel, um, like, it's, it's got different, it's, it's just different, uh, it's hard to explain, like, this whole, the whole bottom part of the car, the, like, bumper and stuff is different on this one, it looks a little more sporty, it's a little lower to the ground, it's stiffer, it's got some bigger wheels on it, let's drive it though. Oh, and it's got a supercharger too, which I think the supercharger is always coming out, but, like, oh, jeez, okay. It's got a lot of understeer as well. So, a fun fact, before, like, the, uh, track models of these cars came out in the last update, I actually built my own track versions before we had the good radiators. So, I had two different versions of the Roamer, uh, that I have kept, and that I will show, uh, if you guys comment down below if you want to see a few of my custom cars. Um, but, no, I, I built a couple custom cars like that, and, like... Sorry, I'm having such a good time driving this thing. Like, seriously. Alright, hang on. We're gonna crash it, and then I'll tell you. <laughs> we, like, oh, wow. Parallel parking, indeed. How would the driver be in this situation? Um, he'd be okay. Um, we broke a lot of stuff there, though. Uh, but he'd probably be a little hurt. Oh, yeah, he'd definitely be a little hurt, but he'd be fine, probably. Uh, we inverted the one wheel, though. Uh, is it even... Oh, yeah, it's still spinning and everything. Is it still attached? It is. There we go. Get the vehicle to move off of there. Like, oh, yeah, we did a good job. We almost stripped the chassis off the car. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. Any of the lights still work or anything? Oh, yeah, the one headlight works. Okay. Uh, interior gauges always work on these no matter how wonky you make them. Uh, for some reason. Don't ask me where their thought process was. And our back tail light still works, too. So... But yeah, so like like I was saying, I was making, I made it a high stool version and a locking torque model of that vehicle. So that was pretty cool. Why am I going to the D series? I should be going to the Roman people. Uh, so that's just something interesting. Like I said, the road sport definitely changed up a little bit. We also have this one, uh, the LXT 35, D 35 grade parts to the Roman line, resulting in a comfortable yet powerful towing machine. Uh, let's get it in a blue, like a, or a purple. Um, I know it's not the stock color, uh, like I've been doing, but I kind of, oh, wow, actually it looks nice and big. Uh, it's nice and wide still, but it's got, like, a different, uh, tailgate to it. And it's diesel, ladies and gentlemen, oh, Romer, that's finally diesel, I am so happy by this. So let's drive this bad boy. They still haven't changed the gauges yet, I don't think. No, they have not done that, which is very true. It's an automatic, it should be shifting up, yeah, there we go. It's, it feels, like, really nice and very heavy-duty. So we'll turn right over here. Definitely takes a lot of time. It's handling pretty good, actually. I can't, I can't complain about the way this thing's driving and stuff. Oh, yeah, there we go. Well, we broke the axle, so it's more of a three-powered drive car now. And it kind of it's resisting the steer, and that's why that one axle up there is just fried chicken. And I think our other one is too. Yeah, we got some beautiful inverted smooth one. There we go. That's what I call it. Let's just put the thing out of its misery. Wait, seriously, this thing needs some good out of its But no, uh, let's drive it a little more though. Uh, I didn't really get to study it enough beyond the wheel in that two second crash. I just like to do those crashes. It keeps the it keeps everything amusing for me. Where did this thing go? Oh, oh, oh. We'll freshen it up right here since we have a couple other more dirt styled ones as well. I think we do anyway. So we'll just drive it. Um, so I can lock my rear differential, so I'm gonna leave them unlocked to see how it handles. It's doing just fine keeping control of everything, that's for sure. Like, 
41 miles an hour through the dirt. It's a little squirrely, but it's really not that bad for being on dirt. And it sounds nice too, when it drives nice. And it's not that bumpy of a ride for being such a heavy duty truck. <laughs> oh, there we go. Get a nice barrel roll inside. Oh, a couple barrel rolls. And it's fine. I mean, the passenger's probably hurt. Uh, he's probably hurt. So, no, for real, this thing, this thing drives really nice, though, and I don't actually think we have another dirt vehicle, I was wrong. Uh, but really nice, feels nice and, uh, heavy duty, but we need to move on. There are just so many things to cover in these videos, guys. Uh, so we have the adventure model and the off-road model, uh, I think these two have been here a while. They're not that different, I don't think, uh... Yeah, I don't think those are that different, but we do have the police package of this now. So we've always had the sheriff and sheriff off-road and fire chief, but we do not have the unmarked police package. So let's hop into this. LXT 35 police, push bar, a heavy-duty suspension, steel wheels, concealed flashers, the spotlight, and a larger engine. So does that mean the same? Oh, it's gasoline now, though. Make up your mind, people. All right, so let's drive it without the flashers. Is the hood working? All right. So my cars, the hood is glitched, so I don't know why, but like it'll like spin around. Okay, we are, yeah, yeah. Stop in the name of the law! I should have used this in my last video, and I didn't. Or my, or not my last video, the video before that one. Police chasing one for Wolf 10, bro. Comment down below if you guys want some more police chases and some more crazy stuff like that in DMG. But you need a comment, ladies and gentlemen, because if you don't comment, I don't know what you guys want. So. You, you better comment. I mean, seriously, if you don't, if you if you don't comment, you're in trouble. I'm just kidding. But all right, so let's take a look at the lights. Lights are nice. Push bar feels nice. Oh wow! Siren's not bad either. All right, let's chase. Let's play a little chasing game here. Oh, my dogs. My dogs are like like. That's oh 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 oh! We already broke an axle. These things are very reluctant. I think that's the right word. Are very known. To break axles today. I am breaking so many axles on like every vehicle I drive. I broke them on the Gavril D series in the last video. I'm breaking them on small bumps with this vehicle. I can I can definitely feel it's uh, definitely a little more wonky. Uh, still not that bad. Stop in the name of the law, Wall. There we go. There we go. No, for real, it's not that bad. Uh, it looks like a normal Gavril to me. So, uh, I, I want to see, though, real quick, if there's actually anything changed on the interior to make it a little more police su suitable. No. No, there, no. No, it's not. So, like, if they're arrested, they can just chill in the back seat. There's no, like, wall or guard or anything. You know, you don't have to worry about that in BMG Drive, people. Um, anyway, we also have the V8 Road Sport LXT models. Uh, when some aftermarket companies began offering Roadsport style fiberglass body kits to the Romer LXD, it was only a matter of time until some genius would build the sportiest Meglin uh, the world has ever seen. So let's keep it in that nice black. Uh, I, I forgot to read the performance class on it, but you guys saw it. So we gotta get it out of here though. Like... Oh, it's powerful though. It's it's kicking, but I want to get it out of here real quick. Is that all the right? I I can't tell. Hang on. All wheel drive, ladies and gentlemen. That's, that's pretty cool. So we'll just drive it nice and carefully. I don't, I don't want to wreck this thing off the bat this time. I actually want to drive on a main road. Can we, can we get a main road, please? This Roamer is the only Roamer that's not made to roam. Come on, I'm light throttling. I'm like a feather throttling at 20 miles an hour. There we go. Oh yeah, and yet we still bent stuff on it. Okay. Alright, so let's stick it here. So, let's see if this thing's any better than the original Road Sport model. Again, it's got those aftermarket parts on it that we saw before. Oh, jeez, is this thing fast. Oh, jeez. Okay, slow it down. The brakes are not doing this truck justice. Uh, this roller justice. Okay, we actually made it alive. I wanted to crash there, but we didn't have enough speed, so let's... Oh, yeah, bro. Street racing! We broke our axle again, and this time we kind of flipped it. Hey, look at that. Now you can see the beautiful engine. Oh, of course, it's that axle. Yeah, this thing's not coming out of the grave, people. 
Uh, but seriously, this thing, this thing drives like an absolute beast. And like I said, small island, you guys can see a lot of differences, different textures and stuff. I never drove it enough to say that, wow, like, I can tell it's different, like, the textures and everything's laid out differently, but that's about all I can tell. I think it's a lot differently anyway. I hardly ever drove this map. It was just so basic. Oh! There we go, let's drive it into the water. Ugh. Ooh! Ooh, wow, that was a good crash, too. Alright, so that's the that's the Romer series, if I'm not mistaken. That's what they had uh, in those. I'll double check real quick. Yeah, that's all that. Uh, so, there, there's that one. And then the H series had some minor differences. So now we have a standard model. And I'm not going to go through all the differences. I'm just going to load up an H30, uh, an H15 Vancer, and then the H35 Vancers. Because those are the two different ones here. So here's a standard Vancer. Oh, I keep dropping my controller. It looks normal. It drives normal. It's your everyday Vancer. But we have a long wheelbase now. It's like, oh, uh, what? 9000 Oh, so it's $1,000 more, uh, this low-end commercial van. My only curiosity is, like, on the standard one. So, first... Okay, before I get going crazy... Let's just park this bad boy next to its friend. So, there's not, like, anything different with the engines or anything... That's all normal and stuff, but first of all, I know it's going to be a little crooked, so I'll try and straighten it the best I can. There we go. You're welcome. Uh, so, it, like I said, it doesn't look... It's just a little bigger. Um, it's honestly just a little bigger. A little more roomy, a couple feet. Here's the standard fanster, and then you got extra room to put all your work materials and all that, so that's not bad. Um, ooh, wow, nice, nice. I'm just kidding. Uh, like I said, it's not anything wild, but I'll drive it for you guys anyway. Uh, I've driven it a little bit. It's really fun to crash, though, just because it's so big. But wait, before I even do that, I have to see. So on the standard one, you can load up paint jobs, and they look pretty normal. Um, oh, yeah, we also have this glass tint feature added to every vehicle, so I'll put on some glass tint for you. So we can just say glass tint, and it should tint all the glass in the vehicle. So it's a little darker now, as you can tell. A little, a little darker, a little cooler. Um... Anyway, I want to see how well it can handle, like, some of the liveries. Uh, if it doesn't... Yeah, okay, so it did stretch out a little bit. Alright, good. Because I was very skeptical about that. Because I thought, well, what if... What if we didn't have, like, that... Yeah, look at that. They kind of brought the logos out a little farther, I think. Maybe not a lot, but a little bit, I think. So it's a little more stretched out and stuff. It makes it look a little better, a little more natural and stuff. So let's, let's, let's drive it. Enough chitter chatter. Let's drive it. Like I said, they also did this with the H25 Vanster, which is just, you guys know what it is. A little more beefed up, heavier suspension and stuff. But other than that, nothing wow. That was not where I wanted to crash, but fine. Oh, 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 push, 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 push. Oh, ho, ho. Yeah, this automatic transmission, though, is not getting along. I'm full throttle right now, and it's not downshifting. Probably, well, we might be real one actually. Okay, deja vu. Oh, and we're grinding it. Yeah, you're welcome for my skateboarder fans. We just did a, we, we just did a board slide, bro. Uh, I'm, sorry. I'm a little rusty. Oof, oof. Lights, bike, at the worst moment ever. The dock looks really cool though, and the sounds are a little different. Isn't that awesome? There you go. Good good spot to let that thing rest. I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna. So, like I said, the H25 is a more beefed up version, but I don't know if this one's new or not, so I'm gonna look at it anyway. And that is the H35 Vanster. Uh, it's just like a newer version uh, with heavier duty suspension. Um, and I wish they would have made this diesel. I feel like it would have looked better. But it's just another. It's a, it's a step up. It's a little more beefy and stuff. So, you can do this stuff and be like, yo, I am the most cool driver ever. Fight me if you dare. <laughs> That's probably what they say every time someone buys a Vancer. If that was if that was the case in real life, just fight me if you dare. Oh wow, look at that. We even uh, got it on its roof. Now before we get a yelling of oil starvation, let's just flip the thing up right and keep going. 
Yeah, you guys always, if you guys ever play this game and you're like, oh, why is he yelling at me? I haven't even done anything with the engine and it's saying oil starvation. All you gotta do is you just gotta be like, oh, oh, I should shut off my engine. So shut it off until you flip your vehicle back upright and then it should be fine and uh, resolve the problem. I feel like I'm playing pinball. Oh, jeez. Nice dent on the side, though. Nice said the H H35 Vanster. Uh, I'm gonna check my notifications real quick, ladies and gentlemen. I'm hoping it was a comment. Let's check, ladies and gentlemen. Excuse me, one minute. I just got a notification. Oh, nothing, uh, nothing major there, ladies and gentlemen. Just had to make sure it wasn't anything important. Gotta remember, guys, I have other things besides YouTube. Um, but YouTube is awesome, and I love working for it. So yeah, just a, just an extended frame version. Uh, you guys don't need me to drive that. It's the same thing. But we do have the fantastic. I, I love the pun. I'm a huge pun guy. So if you're a BeamNG Drive developer, I love it. Uh, the perfect vehicle for your next off-road camping adventure. I'm not sorry. Neither am I, dude. Like, whoever did that pun is the best, and I want to meet him. No, I love this thing, though. I mean, look how beefy this thing is. I mean, that suspension is so soft. If we stuck it in low, we could probably, like, do a wheelie. Oh, now I really want to try that. Oh, it's an automatic. Dude, that's dumb. Yeah, you can, if you beef this thing up a little more power, you can probably get it to do wheelies. Like... The suspension is so soft. Anyway, let's drive it. I'm gonna drive it and load to see how it does around some big bumps. Yeah, here we go over here. Oh yeah, there we go. And it's got like tail light guards and stuff. It's not anything crazy. It's really not. Oh yeah, <laughs> two wheel. Can I land it? Yes, I can. And I just we're a front wheel drive van now. I'm not even joking. I just turned this into a front wheel drive van. You all are so welcome. Come on. Okay, hang on guys, I'm sorry. I'm extremely focused on getting that thing unstuck. Our front wheel drive Vanster, guys. <laughs> the Vantastic. It's fantastic. I love it. Like, it's it's amazing. It, I'm a big fan of it. Oh yeah, your boy just brought a pine. You're welcome. Oh wow, is this thing pulling me? Let's just put it out of its misery. Can we get it to flip at 20 miles an hour? No, no, we can't. Now, there is a high gear range, but I just like using the remote. Come on. You know you want to flip. Like, you can tell it wants to. But it's not gonna. Oh, well. Uh, so that's the H series. Uh, like, or the. Yeah, the H series. Like I said, not any huge differences, just those couple things. Now we got that, the Vandal, and all that. Um, so, I mean, that's cool and everything. Um, and let me double check, but I don't think there's anything new with the hopper. No, because the crawler has been here for quite a while. Um, and then T-Series, I don't think there's anything in that. So, uh, that does leave, let me double check here too. I'm double checking the other cars real quick, guys, just make sure I'm not missing anything for you. Uh, because if I miss something, I would feel horrible, and I don't want to feel horrible. Uh, ETKs, they don't have anything different. Those ETK I-Series, oh, freaking fracks. There we go. Uh, I hit the wrong button there. Uh, the SVR4 does not have anything new either. There is a new sound effect I'll be using later. But anyway, let me show you guys the new Shareers. Now, I'm not going to go through all these. I'm sorry, guys. I don't have the time. So, we'll look at a, a couple view losses. We'll look at the 110 models, and then we'll do, like, a mid-range and a high-end model. But there are so many different... Ugh. Sorry, I yawned. I'm tired. Uh, there's so many different versions. Uh, there's a three-cylinder engine in this and the tow crag. So, uh, I'll load them up side-by-side side real quick, too, so you guys can be like, Yo, what on earth is that, boy? Yeah. That way you can say it just like that, too. Um, so here's the VWAS. Uh, now, like I said, these are just base models of the car. So they're not going to be crazy fast or crazy anything. Like that, but I wanted to get in a base model because I've watched two different videos of the update coverage now, and I haven't seen anyone drive the base models. And I feel like that the base models deserve a little bit of looking at too, um, because they are base models. And for you true beam enthusiasts, you guys are gonna want to see this stuff just to see like, hey, how actually is the base model? 
So now I got them loaded up. They're nice side by side. So I'll shut off the engine. Uh, they are two different cars technically. Like this one's a crossover, and the standard one's just a nice modern hatchback. Um, they're French cars. I think they look pretty cool. Um, just a quick overview around them and stuff. A little bigger, a little beefier. The interior though, that's where the major stuff happens. So if I hit tab on both, and there we go. So if we look on the interiors, guys, we can see it is a nice and beautiful manual. It's got, like, a lot of, like, I gotta see if I can read what that button says. Uh, bear with me here. Like, it's hard to do it with the controller. It's very sensitive, um, as you can tell. Drive mode, and then the parking brake, and then we got our gears. We got telephone buttons and all that, and these are all the same in the other vehicle as well. And then we got those really nice gauges right there. I mean, seriously, isn't that nice? Let's turn on the car a minute. Hang on, sorry. And then stick it in neutral before I go down there. So that's that. It's got your temp gauge and everything. Then we got that. Oh, sorry, it's really hard to control this thing. But yeah, we got all that too. It's got like your AC, your defrost, your rear defrost. Yeah, boy. And then look at that stitching pattern too. It's like zoom out a little bit there. That's kind of sickening. So it's got really nice like patterns. And let's drive it real quick. So it's a uh, manual. This is full throttle. There is comfort mode, and then there's a couple different modes. I kind of forgot what car. I'm in. I think I'm in the Vivas. Yeah, I'm definitely in the Vivas. Yeah, no, I'm in the Tograk, ladies and gentlemen. I'm in the more offer worthy one of them. Hang on one sec, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we are back in Beeman G Drive. Um, for you guys, it was like two seconds. For me, it was like five hours. I just had to get a couple things done. And if you are wondering like what I mean by a couple, let's just say I had quite an amount of stuff to get done. Um, not, not anything like or anything it was more of a I just had to um, I guess so I just had to take care of a couple things so like you know so anyway I spawned up a base model and I know you guys are like well hey weren't we just at small island we were but I was getting quite a frame rate drop for no reason so I decided to come to West Coast USA and I figured we covered so much a small island that we could come here and I'm still getting quite a frame rate drop and I don't know why uh, but it is normal on this map. Uh, oh, I'm getting 26 frames per second right now. That's ridiculous. I usually get 43. Anyway, so if we look at the base model car compared to the higher end, we got some nicer rims, and we also have a sunroof and some more performance. So let's get rid of this little guy, and I'm pretty sure it's all-wheel drive now. Uh, I could be mistaken. Well, we'll actually turn off ESC, see if this thing can do a burnout. No, it's still front wheel. That's a bummer. Anyway, so I got the DCT version, so let me show you something interesting. So when you drive on com comfort mode, you might notice, of course, the TCS and everything, but listen. Okay, so you hear that, right? So if I put it in sport mode, it should sound a little louder, and the suspension stiffens up. Alright, maybe not as much on this model, but still, this thing goes ridiculously fast. Like 93 miles an hour, 95 miles an hour off that. Let's give it a good wreck. Ooh, got a huge, got a bit of a lag spike there. Um, is this thing still drivable though? No. Not in the slightest. That's a bummer, because it's front wheel drive. But it definitely looks cool, and that was quite the good crash. Does that one light still work? I swear if it does. No. Uh, one cool thing too is I'm going to show you real quick. So when you crash this car, it's pretty cool, because watch. Now that wasn't quite enough of a dent, I guess. I guess, uh, I guess we're gonna drive it into the bottom again. Um, but with this car, it's not like the ESBR and all the standard. You notice how I mentioned that the gauges always still works for some reason, but are super wonky. Even the ESBR, which has fully electric gauges, they still work no matter how hard the impact. With this one, it's actually a lot different. Watch. They do shut off, indeed. They do actually break, which is kind of. It's not anything major, but it's kind of a cool thing. Um, there are so many models, and of course, you guys know I'm not covering every single model of the um, of the Shurir, but just because there's so many guys. Uh, same with the uh, like the Telgrak and the Vivas. I will drive the police versions of these. Uh, that way, you do know what the difference is. Uh, there is a diesel version, so I will show that off. That's this bad boy, and I just like to showcase this thing anyway. It looks pretty cool. Uh, it's not very fast, and I think that's kind of annoying, but I guess you don't always need speed, do you? So this is full throttle, and watch this, too. So, like, the lights, 
that. Now it's dropping my frame rate here, and I don't know, like I said, I don't know why. I have this my, my computer plugged in. It runs nice and good when the when the PC is plugged in, but for some reason today, as soon as I got back into it, my frame rate has just dropped for no reason. I even rebooted the game, and it's still dropping my frame rate. So I don't know. Maybe uh, there's just a glitch. I have no idea, but we definitely damaged this thing because trying to drive it in a straight line now is like, hang on. Right here should show. Yeah, I had to hold that steering wheel quite in place. This is this is without steering. So let's see if we can crash this bad boy. It's trying. It's trying to not let us, but you know, I'm lucky, man. I'm not gonna let this. You know, just, ooh, jeez, that was a good game up to the. Yeah, screens are busted, but can the car itself still work? We like fried that back axle though. Um, that was a good crash. I'm really happy with that. Let's see. So TCS is probably going to be yelling at us. And yes, the car still drives, which is epic. But yeah, TCS, if it was going to be lighting up, it would be lighting up. But the gauges are busted. I killed him. Uh, could you imagine driving a car that's got faulty gauges like this? Like, oh, geez, that's a painful crash, too. But, like, could you imagine? Anyway, so there's a tow rack model of that, too. I'm not going to show off the tow rack one. You guys know what a tow the tow rack looks like. Um, there are just so many different models, especially for this one. Um, so we will actually grab the uh, highest end version of the Tograk, and I think that's the Amateur Rally. But let's do a high end model first. So like, there's 160 model crossover, four cylinder, and all wheel drive. But this one looks like the probably the meanest of the group. And then we got the Tograk Amateur Rally in the QE. So let's drive this one around a little. I definitely like these cars, um, and the more sporty you get, uh, the more mean and aggressive they drive. Uh, a lot of people have said, eh, I don't really like the Tograk, it's just a crossover, it's nothing wow to me. To me, to me, it's something huge. I actually really like this car, I think it looks sporty and really, really cool. Wow, it got down here, okay, that's for sure, let's see if we can... Ooh! Oh, that was a good crash, dude, do the gauges still work? Gauges still work fine. The ESC is going on us, so I am going to pause the physics by hitting J, and I'm just going to... Oh, there's an off-road mode! I didn't know the Togark actually had an off-road mode, so let's just drive around with that. It sounds a little meaner, too. Hang on, hang on. Let's be quiet and listen. It does kind of sound a little meaner, I guess. I don't know if they, like, what the difference is. The off-road one, it feels a little more loose. Like, oh yeah, it's definitely a lot more loose. Did you see that, guys? That's, ooh. Ooh, we got it dinged up still, but that, that was kind of interesting, the way, it, the way it moved there. I'm actually going to, real quick, guys, I'm going to try and... Oh, why is my power surge way back there all of a sudden? I have a power surge that I use for my gaming stuff, and it doesn't always work right. So, I'm going to turn it off and then see how bad our frame rate goes. Okay, and then I'm going to turn it back on. Alright, there we go, that kind of fixed it. <laughs> How many frames are we getting now? Yeah, we're getting 39, which is pretty good, so, um, that's, that's good. So, sometimes I guess it's a matter of just resetting that. Um, no, anyway, the off-road mode seems to, oh, and there goes our frame rate again. Um, that's okay, though. No, the, the, the off-roading mode seems to change it up a little bit, like, hazards, you can go off now. Like, the hazards instantly turn on, but... It gives it, like, a different, like, suspension setup, makes it a little more aggressive, I guess, or a little, uh, a little softer, actually, because it's off-road, so, it's kind of nice, uh, it's a better way of absorbing jumps, so, I'm pretty happy with that, let's drive it in the dirt a little bit down here, uh, double-check one last time with the tow rack, and then we shall move on to a different car, oh, wow, wow, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, this thing handles like a true it feels nice and it feels smooth. I would actually love to drive this thing in real life. The gauges definitely mess me up a little bit. The RPM gauge always does because of the way these ones are designed. That's not a cut or anything. Like, if you, if you live in, like, France and if you got gauges like that on your car, that's great. That's cool. I just, personally, I can't. I have a hard time getting used to that. But, you gotta remember. That's just my opinion. So. Alright, let's crash it. Ooh, we, we killed the engine. <laughs> Do our, any of our lights still work? Is our, our interiors shot? Um, our back lights still work, but I was hoping the front lights work. So that's that version. And then there are two electric cars I also want to show you guys that came with this update too that are pretty beast. 
Uh, so we have the Vivacity. Oh, there was one more nice uh, Tograk, but that's more of a sport edition. We'll, we'll, we, we won't drive that one. Um, hate to break it to you guys, but like this video is already really long for a part two, so I'm trying to quicken it up. So here is the electric model of the Vivas. It's got this really nice, I mean, the textures aren't agreeing with my PC for some reason, as you can tell, but it's got a really cool screen. I mean, look at that thing. So if I lightly throttle, what's it going to put me at? It's going to put me at eco. So light throttles eco, and then full throttles power mode, and then it'll charge the battery when we're coasting, which I don't even know if the ESBR does that in this game. Now, it's not near as aggressive of any as any of the ESBRs, not at least on the comfort or stock mode, but it does work really nice. Uh, let's see if it goes back up to 100 if we just let it charge for a sec. It probably won't. It's probably going to be very slow about it, but I'm just kind of curious. Like, I'd like to see if the battery goes up to 100. I don't think it's going to, though. I'm just letting the thing coast. Yeah, no. Not quite, but uh, it's pretty cool. So let's try the sport version on the electric one. I kind of want to see this, and it's in red. And a lot of you are probably like me and go, "Well, isn't that drift in the uh, um in the vehicles?" No, nope, not in this one. It's not. Uh, and like I said, there's like an eco throttle. So if you like, if you don't, if you're on keyboard, it's always gonna be throttle unless you do that. Hit W multiple times. But on a controller, you got especially like I have a third party controller. So a lot of you are probably like, "Oh, there's a shocker." Uh, Leopard Man's got those horrible third-party controllers, but even you can see, I can lightly throttle this thing all day. Oh, there we go. We're having a little bit of a struggle up the hill, but nothing this car can't handle. Let's, uh, let's gun it and see how all it, it goes. It's got a lot of understeer to it, but that's okay. Okay, hang on. Is this one front, or is this all-wheel drive? I really wish this was all-wheel. I don't think it is. No, it's not. All right, we'll try and drift it anyway. I'm not the best drifter anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's how well this thing drifts. All right, so this is without ESC. That's about as good as you're going to see me drift in, uh, in a little car like this. Yeah, yeah, the front wheel drive is not very nice. All right, let's drive it through the narrow streets, and let's ram into a pole. That only hit my bumper and... Oh, but it busted something. Oh, yeah, it busted that front axle, which no longer is able to drive. We'll freshen it up, and we'll hop into a different vehicle. So, I'm thinking for the next Tograk, or I'm thinking we're going to switch to a Tograk. There are a lot of sport models, so there are, like, basic sport models for the Vivas. I don't know what the 190 is. Yeah, these are all, like, basic sport models, and some of them still don't have a performance class yet. Uh, they get better and better sports models as they go. Uh, I don't know what this is, police sport model, okay, so this is like a police sport model, we'll try that a little bit, but yeah, they, um, and then they go up, like, special edition sport models, and then they have, like, these real special edition sport models with five cylinders, and then they have these really crazy ones, so, again, I'm not driving all of them, uh, and then we got to a couple Tograks I want to drive, the Amateur Rally and the Tograk QE we're going to drive as well, and then a couple, and then the Rally car and maybe a track day or something, I'm not sure yet. Uh, but we're just going to drive a few more. So let's try this bad boy out. And it already feels way ridiculous. Wow, that's a bright light. Jesus. No, I did not say. No. I said, geez, this. Okay? In case some of you are like, did you just, what did you just say? Because I try and keep this very clean and very focused. Not that that was anything. Really. I'm sorry. I kind of get startled sometimes. Oh, my God. Keep driving. This thing is ridiculously fast, though. Oh my gosh, dude, this thing is like fast. Brakes, brakes, brakes. Brakes work fine. And I'm pretty sure this bad boy's all-wheel drive as well. I'm gonna turn off the ESC and I'm gonna turn off the siren. That's not my type of siren. All right. So the best way for me to tell. It's front wheel drive cameras. Okay. Yeah, it is. Like, that's a bummer. You can drive it in manual, which is kind of nice. There we go. That's a crash for the ages. Look at that back wheel. If if we would have done that any harder, it would have came right off. I don't know if you guys know that I absolutely love it when in, in this game I love it when I crash a car just good enough to like completely bend that back wheel. 
I love doing that. I love hitting a curve in this game and just bending out that room. There we go. It finally came off and the front one's busted. So that's a pretty cool car. Um, I'm going to skim by these last few just because there are so many guys. Uh, and like I said, we drove the Vivas Electric. That's kind of a cool car. Um, and then there's another 270 DCT version. So we're going to move on to the Tograx, a couple different Tograx. Uh, so we're going to drive the QE, and I'm going to give it its stock color, and boy, do I have to say those rims are weird. I think this thing's set to be very futuristic, and boy, does it have that. <laughs> I mean, those are some interesting rims for sure. Now, even though those aren't my preference, I mean, I don't think they're that bad. A lot of people go, go here, those ugly. I go, bruh, they're not that bad. I mean, they're weird, but they're not ugly at all. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. This is an off-road car after all. It's sticking off. There's no off-road mode? Okay, I guess we'll do it with the ESC off. That's kind of a bummer, though. Now, this one's pretty fast, too. Again, these are not ESBR standard fast. I just kind of wanted to drive it up these shiny steps and see how it handled it if I did it slow. Because um, it's kind of a low-sitting tow rack, so. Yeah, I'm going to have to strip that bumper. All right, sorry, guys. This is going to hurt all of you car lovers. Ah! There we go. It still just doesn't want to deattach. Alright, I'm just going to deattach it real quick, or disattach it, whatever the word is. I'm sorry, I've had a long day. There we go. I'm sure you all have, though, with uh, what's been going on recently. Uh, the whole virus thing. I'm sure that's been driving everyone nuts. Come on, how are you still not able to get up these stairs? They're not that hard. I guess we're going to have to get a lot of speed and bash it. Wait, no, I think the inner fender came out finally. Yeah, there we go. If it didn't have such a low clearance, it could probably make that. Oh, and this one's only front-wheel drive, too. That's kind of disappointing. Uh, I feel like it would be a much better car if it wasn't. Oh, well, just driving around a little. There we go. Put the ESC back in place. And it no longer, like, tries to slow down your car when you accelerate into... Ooh, that was a good drift. Can we... Or a good crash. Can we get out of it, though? No. But th there is something cool you can do with these cars, too. Um, I think it's really neat, the fact that, like... Now, with the ESC, it has been changed, so, like, you know how originally, if you were to go around a corner, it would, like, completely prevent it? It doesn't completely prevent it anymore. Um, I like it. Oh, yeah, and you got, like, these inner fender parts that actually come out now, too. I mean, not anything huge, but just some cool minor details like that. So, let's drive this thing a little bit. Uh, let's actually get onto the... I can't remember how you get onto the main expressway. I don't think this is it, no. Oh, okay. Um, maybe not. We'll just recover the car a little bit. That's how you recover it. You just use the left on the D-pad. Uh, if you have an Xbox One controller or a third-party Xbox One controller or a 360. Uh, but you can always... Oh, the brakes on this thing are horrible, though. I'm sorry. I don't care what people say. I do not like the brakes on these. I'm not such a fan. Like, the way that they blink multiple... I, I know it's, like, more of a safety... I think safety for the game, like a safety car thing, but like, I just don't like it. It it doesn't help. And this understeer is like, I like the car itself, but there's way too much understeer on these cars for me to possibly like it uh, a lot more. Oh, yes, I did finally find the expressway, though. So, uh, we're going to get up here and see how fast this bad boy can go on the way up to the expressway. Just like these steering, like these steering. So, about 114. Not bad. Oh, I did not mean to go out of the map there, but we kind of went out of the map anyways. So, we'll just recover our car. This is chaotic recovering. Um, spin it around, and let's switch into a couple final models. So, starting out, we'll hit Control r freshen up, reset the car, make it all nice and spicy. Uh, but we're not going to be needing services from this car anymore. Um, so there are, like I said, there's a lot of different versions, and the rally cars I'll save for last. I'll put those to a special place. Uh, but we are going to take a the biggest Vivas there is at $55,600. Um, still not that expensive, I guess. These are pretty cool cars, though. Oh, look at this paint job, and it, excuse me, and it matches the interior really nice. There's no more sunroof, though. Uh, that's kind of a bummer, but, uh, for being a hatchback, this thing looks a beast. And there's only a sport mode, I think. Um, yeah, there's, oh, there is a comfort mode. In this car, you can really hear it, so listen closely when I rev the comfort mode compared to the sport. Listen closely.
notice how on the comfort mode it kind of mutes the sound out a little bit but on the others it's a little different so we're going to start out with sport mode oh jesus this thing fast guys i am so excited oh look at this bad boy i'm excited i got it in sport mode right now oh my gosh is this thing fast <laughs> it looks like it says 55 but it's s5 for like sport 5. jeez this thing is really fast though you gotta steer it gently, it's definitely a little loose. This thing is still chugging along at 170 miles an hour. Oh, no, we're slowing down a little bit. Uh, I think it was the downhill. 168! Oh, scratch it. Let's just... Okay, we are gonna pancake to the side of the car, and it, it, it can still put down power after all that. Or, it can't put down power, but it can still... <laughs> That's oh, oh there goes our tire as well. Wow, that is madness right there. So this thing puts out a lot of power. Let's try the arsenic mode. I don't know what that is, so we're gonna try it. It lets us lay a lot more throttle. Wow, this thing is beast. And it feels just slightly faster and slightly more aggressive. I think that's what the arsenic mode is. Oh wow, look at this thing go and just, just listen to this thing. Ooh, yeah, would you be dead after that? Hit to be super violent here. Backseat might be okay, but after that bad of an impact, probably not. Uh, that is just such a cool car. But to end it off, guys, what I'm going to do is... I, I don't, Well, I actually, I got one more to try. We're going to take the hill climb version, or there's a track day version, um, but that's a little more basic. We're going to take the VLOS hill climb. Now, there are a couple other track versions. Like I said, I'm not doing that. Let's try this one. This thing it has a lot of power behind it. But it only goes 158 miles an hour. No, 155 miles an hour. 154, that's it? I mean, seriously, for a track day car, you can put uh, a lot more power behind it. Look at that backfire, though. Jeez, man. And that is just so pretty to listen to. Um, yeah, it gets about 158 and then goes back down to 150. Let's, uh... Get a little air. Ooh, hit the side of the car. Um, the only things, uh, even the fuel tank got ruptured after that. Wow. Uh, how would the driver be in this situation? The one gauge still works fine. Rest doesn't. Um, the shifter looks a little wacky. Let me. Yeah, that shifter looked a little wacky. And of course, the things are stripped. Oh yeah, the ra there's no radio anymore. The shifting on this thing though, it's got such nice gears. Okay, here we go. We're gonna hit ground. Oh wow, was that a nice crash too? Oh, and I stalled out the car. Wow, that that that's cool. All right, guys. So I will meet you uh, to the next location, the final location of the night. Here we go. All right, boys. We are back over and we are going to automation test track and we're going to go to the rally course section uh it's not anything big so we can't get a whole bunch of speed or anything but i have to show you guys the rally car if you guys didn't know a fun fact i actually used the vivos rally car for a um thing that i did and that was a double barrel corkscrew um we're gonna need the gravel version of both of the cars so we're gonna load up the standard um this version first, uh, but I'm actually going to drive this one last. I'm just going to leave this bad boy right here. Shut down for fuel efficiency, of course. I'm weird like that. Uh, but we're going to take a basic front-wheel drive rally car using a stock drivetrain and upgraded brakes, tires, and suspension. And after this, guys, you need to check out my friend Dova Anthony. He's doing a live stream right now. I don't know if it's going to be there when I'm done with the video, but we'll see. It just started, and he's usually on those live streams for quite a while. Like I said, alright, so we're going to drive this version first. This is a tow drag version. As you can tell, it's got a little bit more ground clearance, but a lot slower. It's still nice, though. Well, I, I can't undo what I just did. No, I'm shifting it. 
it, 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 it. I mean, it's there. It's not horrible. It's a good, I guess, it's a good beginner Charlie car. It feels nice. A little slow for my liking, but you know. <laughs> and they said it uses, uh, they, uh, the developers said it uses a stock drive track, too. I mean, it's not bad. Ooh, ooh, a little crazy on that corner. I'm not super, oh, my camera just messed me up there. It's okay, it's just a minor barrel roll. We should be able to get right back up in on the track. Providing I can wiggle away through the trees. This is the part that's fun. The car does not feel super damaged or anything. So we'll hop by this corner to wheel it a little just for you guys. This is where we can get a little bit of speed. Like 55 miles an hour for this car is not bad. And we're gonna barrel roll it again. <laughs> and still land on our wheels, which means we can still keep bringing this thing over and bring it back to the start. I'm actually, I really like this one. Um, oh no, did I bend the back axle? Yes, I did, but thankfully we are here back at the start. Let's just, hey bud. Oh yeah. So we'll just reset him, bring him here, and reset our bad boy, and drive this one. So I'm going to use realistic gearbox and shift to the best of my abilities. Look at all that backfire on this version, too. And it's funny, you would think they'd use the Tograk model again for the Pro. No, they use a Vivas model, so it's interesting. Boy, I, I'm like going to, I'm actually going to stick it in arcade mode. It might be a little easier for me so I can try, try and do a little bit of drifting here. Even with the lag spike, I'm going to try and maintain it, so... I'm a little more familiar, um... I, I, after driving a lot, you get more familiar with the track, but, like... The Vavaz, it feels like I know what I'm doing with it. The Cobrack is just this little front-wheel drive thing. You can't do much with it, but this thing... This thing is Vavaz, Vavaz, and the way they put the gearing on these things are just absolutely ridiculously good. This is probably the best rally car in the game. I still love the Sunburst version, but, like, I really like this version of Oh, jeez. Oh, I, I took that one a little harder than I. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, I actually used this car and modded it a little bit um, and turned it into my, uh, used it for my, oh! Oh, freaking heck. Oh, no. I bet the back, back actually stinks. But we're at the start. <laughs> no, but I actually used this car um, for my uh, last, uh, yeah, last trick, but I adjusted the gearbox to 0.7 on the final gear, so if you guys are like, yo, how do you do it? That's how you do it, so in case you guys want to do a double gear of course, now you know. Anyway guys, that will do it for the 0.19 update video. There was one more thing that I forgot to mention, and that is if you go in water, there's actually sound now for the water, so when you drive underwater in your submarine electric car, uh, there's stuff for that. Anyway guys, thank you very much, and I will see you all in the next video. You gotta hit the like button and the subscribe, and I will see you all then. Alright, take care now.